This is the wiring diagram and you can see that it's very simple. We've got a wire at the very top and then a 1K and a 10K and a couple of capacitors and a couple of coils and they're all connected together through a 1K resistor that goes to ground. And here is the build for it. Like I said, it's very simple. And the first experiment that we're going to do is hook up a 9 volt battery to this circuit. Let's measure the voltage of this 9 volt battery before we start. I'll take this off the circuit here. Okay. Just slightly over 9 volts. Okay, let me hook this back up. Okay, now here's our wire. And that wire goes just around here through that 1K ohm resistor. So that's why it's reading 8 dot 9 volts. Okay, here's our K1 resistor. 4.51 and here's our 10K dot 8 to 5. Okay, so the two resistors lower the voltage and of course this will be much lower because it's 10 times this one. Okay, here's our first capacitor. That's 500 picofarad. It's blocking DC. Can't read through that. Here's our dot zero one. It's blocking DC also. Can't read through it. Here's our coil. And it is 39.9 ohms. And we read about 8.6 volts. And it's 2 millihenries. Now this is quite a bit more ohms. It's 1,949 ohms. And it also has uh, 3,773 millihenries. Although that doesn't really matter here. But we got 3.0 volts. Here's the summary. At the wire we had 8.9 volts. And at the 1K we had 4.5. And the 10K.8 volts. And the two capacitors both of those block the DC, so they read infinite ohms. Both the coils would allow DC to pass through. At 39 ohms, we had 8.5 volts DC. And the larger coil, 1,949, we had 3 volts. Here's the next experiment. I'm going to hook up an oscilloscope to this and a signal generator, AC. And we're going to go through these frequencies of 100, 1 kHz, 10 kHz, 100 kHz, and 1 meg. Okay, I've got the generator hooked up to the wire here and we're starting off with 100 Hertz. Now I'm not going to change the time base on the oscilloscope because we're mainly after the amplitude of the different frequencies and of course I could change it for each one of the frequencies but it looked like this and again, all we're interested in is 
the amplitude of the signal. So this is 100 hertz on the wire and let's take it up to 1k hertz about the same amplitude and 10k hertz and then 100k hertz and 1 meg it dropped down just a little bit not much okay back down to 100 hertz now let's go to the K1 I should say the 1K resistor right here okay just the lower level which is to be expected there's the 1K 10K 100K 1 meg hertz okay here's the 10K ohm resistor right here and this is what we expect an even lower level let's go up to 1K 10K 100K 1 megahertz okay that's exactly what we expect okay let me bring that back down to 100 hertz and this is the 500 pico farad capacitor and I really don't see anything here so let's go up to 1k seeing just a little bit not much at all okay let's do the 10k just a little bit more but that's really not much okay let's do the 100k all right that's quite a bit higher now let's go up to the one meg hurt hertz and that's quite a bit higher so audio doesn't go through this but uh, RF will now let's turn this back down to 100 Hertz and let's go to the dot zero one microfarad capacitor in it I'm looking at the scope with just a slight ripple at 100 here's 1k more audio here's 10k so that's quite a bit more and here is 100k more yet and 1 megahertz okay so this one let's audio and RF through get back down to 100 Hertz and here is our coil that's uh, 39 ohms and uh, dot 9 and 2 millihenries inductance and that looks pretty much like the wire let me go back to the wire here yeah looks pretty much like the wire okay so let's go up to 1k and 10k still about the same 
100k. Uh, went down a little bit. And here's the 1 meg. Ooh, that dropped quite a bit. So, this is going to let audio through, but block RF. Hmm. Okay, back down to 1 hertz, or 100 hertz. Here's the, let's see, this coil's 1,949 ohms, and the inductance, or in millihenries, is 3,773. Now I'm seeing just a little bit of ripple. Not much. Let's go up to 1K. And that is pretty well flat. I mean, it's a real small amount. And here's 10K. I uh, don't really see anything there. Here's a hundred K. Yeah, just a little bit. Not much. And here's one meg. Okay, well we got some results there. Uh, which might be surprising because that's RF. But uh, we'll talk about that a little bit later. Here's the summary with the wire, of course, we had audio and RF, and I also added in DC, uh, reminding us of the earlier experiment. Then on the 1K, we had audio RF, a lower amplitude, and of course, lower DC, and the 10K same thing but lower but now on the 500 pico farad we had rf notice i don't have audio down there and it also blocks dc on the dot zero one microfarad we have audio and rf but it still blocks dc on the lighter coil, the one that's uh, resistance of 39 ohms, we had audio frequency and DC, but this one now is blocking RF. And the larger coil, 1,949 ohms, we basically just have DC going through there, but we did find a little RF. So let's take a look at how that RF gets through that large coil. Well, here's a, a coil where we can see the windings very easily. And it happens to be a toroidal, but that doesn't matter. What I want to point out is each winding that is against another winding between those two is capacitance. And in that large coil, uh, we've got very thin wire, insulated wire, and it's wound and wound and wound, and everything that touches and is next to each other, and top and bottom, produces capacitance. So that's where that comes from. But as we're going to see a little later, that large coil, that little bit of capacitance is not going to be a problem because where these are used, uh, there's no RF anyway. Let's take a look at some actual diagrams where some of these characteristics are used. This is a typical AA5 radio and the part that I'm interested in is the detector, the 12SQ7. So let's take a closer look at this and on this lead 
is 455 kilohertz and audio. And what happens here is the 455 kilohertz, which is RF, will easily pass through that 220 picofarad capacitor to ground. Now you have to remember that electrons will find the easiest way to get to ground. And that RF frequency sees that path through that 220 picofarad capacitor as a dead short. Keep in mind that that capacitor also blocks DC. Okay, now the audio can't get through that picofarad capacitor, the 220. It continues on through the volume control, through another capacitor, that dot zero one, up to the control grid of the 12SQ7, which amplifies it and sends it on. Now I want to also point out that that dot zero one microfarad capacitor also blocks DC, and if you were to take a meter and read the voltage on the center point of the volume control and on the other side of the capacitor, you would find that there are two different DC voltages. Here's another wiring diagram. And this time, I want to take a look at the power supply. And in this power supply, you'll notice that we have L6, a nice large choke. And what that does is it pretty much blocks all AC from getting through. And with capacitors on both sides, that is a classic pi filter. I also want to point out that this large choke that we mentioned earlier, that, you know, some RF can get through, but there is no RF in this power supply. So there's no problem. So on the right-hand side, C21C is pretty much pure DC. In the show more of this video, I have these four links to other videos that go into the circuit in more detail, showing how the characteristics of the resistor, capacitor, and coils are used in various different circuits. Thanks for watching.